Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And this is Real True Street Crime. Let me kick it like this. I want to weigh in and tell y'all it take a village to raise a man. My village truly. I never want y'all to ever think I raised myself, my father did. And coming to French Road, I have to tell y'all I had a village family. Dennis Richardson, Curtis Richardson, and Tony Richardson. I couldn't have did it without them. I don't ever want y'all to think that. They were very important to me. Understand that I could have never did it without Dennis, Tony, and Kurt. Thank all of you brothers, because you all truly helped me. And I want to talk about two more brothers who was my right and left hand, William Harmon, a special brother, and 250, Brother Johnson. Those were my right and left hands, Craig and William Harmon. Those brothers were with me every day, most all the time. Understand that, and if they wasn't, they was on French Road taking care of business for me. So those people was deadly important to me, and I couldn't have made it without them. And I have to take my hat off to all of them. Paul McDaniel is dead. He is no longer here. He is definitely a part of the team. Paul McDaniel was part of my team. But I want to tell y'all, I used to always laugh and joke, me, William, and 250. And William was telling us about his brother, Miss Roby. Miss Roby was a cross-dressing 6'5 man. And I'm going to tell y'all something. When I always think about William, talk about him and laughing and joking, and we used to laugh, I'd be falling down laughing after William get through talking about his brother, Miss Roby. And Miss Roby looked funny. Y'all will not understand this, but it's true. I told y'all, life and art intertwines. Miss Roby looked just like Tyler Perry, honest to God, just like that. And he dressed, he was big like that. He stayed sharp. He only wore Chanel and Gucci. Miss Roby was the sharpest transvestite I ever met. I had a lot of transvestite friends in my life because I was a businessman. I didn't pay no attention to what he looked like. And understand this, I want y'all to know something. Miss Roby, for everybody out there who know him and this many who knew him, ain't never lost a fight. You want to walk up and tease him about being, and another person who reminds me in a comedian style of him is Flav. If y'all know Flav, Miss Roby would keep you laughing like him. Because a little kid would look at him and be knowing, what is that, a man or a woman? And Miss Roby was the type that a cut of up. Well, honey, you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> you too young to know anyways. <laughs> Miss Roby used to do shit like that. He was one of the funnest people to hang out with, to go to a mall shopping with. Him and his crew, a transvestite. I had some of the funnest time of my life hanging out with William and Miss Roby, us out there bullshitting, making money. Because understand this, Miss Roby was buying a half ounce of straight up China white from me. And at that time, ounces cost $8,500. Miss Roby was paying $4,250 for a half ounce of China white. All right. Miss Roby, Ounces of cane at that time cost $1,600. Miss Roby was buying an ounce of cane and he was buying a half ounce of raw. Understand the kind of money Miss Roby spent while I didn't take Miss Roby for a joke because it wasn't no joke to me. $4,250 and $1,600 ain't no joke. And if a man spending money with you dressed like a woman or whatever he's dressed like, he deserves respect because his money going to get respect in him too from me. So I was never the type to tease transvest type because I had a lot of them that made money with me and came and spent money with me. Let me tell you about another place just telling you about it. 
It was a place called Minjo's. It was on Six Mile in Detroit, right outside of Highland Park, the borderline. When you cross over to Minjo's, you was in Detroit. You cross back over at that time, they had a church's chicken directly across the street from Minjo's. One side is Highland Park, the other side is Detroit. Let me show you what I'm talking about, Minjo's. Minjo's used to have people from all over the world coming to eat. So when Minjo's, Minjo's opened on Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, let me tell you what you could make serving Minjo's, and this is a place all homosexuals frequent. It was an all homosexual bar. I don't give a damn. The kind of money I was making out of Minjo's from Thursday to Sunday you can go ahead on and talk that bullshit to somebody else. Because let me explain to you the kind of money that was coming in Minjo's during the epidemic, the crack rush. When crack killed Applejack, he jumped in and he couldn't jump back. This is the time I'm talking about. That song was playing, crack killed Applejack. He jumped in and he couldn't jump back. He was just too blind to see that death lives in the rock house. Understand that what was planned. In Minjo's, let me understand the youth. Ran it, and Minjo's didn't open and get cranked up to really about 8 o'clock. They might have opened 7, 30, 8 o'clock, but they really got cranked up really about 12, 1. But let me explain to you how Minjo's was and how it worked. Minjo's is right there at 6 Mile, and I'm right here on Geneva. Freight. My cousin, he brings King DJ Killer. He go up there, he broke. He had church ticket and he broke. And Freddie used to like to do like you all do now, wear his pants down where you could see his ass. That's how my cousin Freddie used to be, get drunk and shit. So he up there at churches wearing his pants down around his ass. You could see it, the crack of his ass hold on down, okay? Now these two sissies come from Minjo's going to get some goddamn chicken at church's chicken and they happen to see DJ Killer with his pants on the ground. So these two sissies must have liked what they saw DJ Killer's ass. <laughs> they must have liked what they saw. So they tries to pick him up. Understand Freddy half-ass drunk and know what he doing. So the two sissies pick him up, tell him, come over to Negroes and party with us. So they over there, they party. And what you know, they want some crack. Oh, shit. They just said the magic words to that nigga. That crack, oh, shit. That motherfucker ready to party for real. Now pants on the ground and all. Freddie come back down to the building on Geneva. But these two goddamn sissies, he said, Jack. I got these sisters, boy. I got them smiling, laughing. Freddie was a silly motherfucker too, DJ Killy. Rodney ought to tell y'all about this silly motherfucker. Because he was another silly motherfucker. He gonna get the two sisters out of there that they caught him at churches. He bring them down to Geneva the building. We sell it from there. Let me make a long story short. Freddie, them sissies, and several, several, several other sissies throughout that whole night, and I don't have to lie, I'm telling y'all the truth. They ran over $20,000 Thursday night Minjo's. Freddie caught them sissies up there at Church's Chicken with his pants on the ground showing his ass and came up with $20,000. Them motherfuckers smoke all night. They go back up to the club, he he come, with two more goddamn sissies. Freddie ran and smoked and got high all goddamn night. I mean, it was a hell of a night and he got to the point of, he would work Minjo. He'd go up there on a Friday night. It might be a little slow at first at uh, uh, Geneva in Highland Park. Might be a little slow at the building. Freddie, so Freddie said, Jack, check this out. I know where to go. That nigga lower his pants, go up there, sit on that stupid church's chicken, wait on them goddamn sissies to come over there for Minjo's, and the party has got started, baby. DJ Killer has started.
the potty. Understand a weekend running Minjo's at that time. Motherfuckers was coming from Canada riding 911 Porsches. I had to tell DJ Killer, nigga, leave them up there, them cars up there. Don't bring them niggas down here in them 911 Porsches, them Cadillacs, Rolls Royces, and all of it. That's what they was riding at Minjo's. He had the Corniche white with the black. He had the white outside with the black interior, black drop. This one gay brother that was spending money buying crack. Keep the rolls up there at Men Joe's. Fred, you come on down here. Or either I started to prevent that. I started running up the churches and let Freddie come over to churches and I would hit him up and he ran back over there and hit them up. Understand that. Don't let them hot ass cars come there because they're going to burn you up. Because trust me, they had all the hottest cars in that lot at Men Joe's. Walk in there and anybody who used to go to Menjo's will tell you they lot look like the parking lot of cars of stars. I've met people from Canada there, people from Australia there. I have met people from all over the world at Menjo's. And let me correct that. I have met that money from all over the world coming out of Menjo's. So I ain't never wanted to tease or torment gay people because they always cash me out. So I understand that I'm just telling y'all about Miss Roby ain't never lost a fight. If Men Joe's, man, that was the place to make some money. At that time, Lord have mercy. DJ Killer tapped into the bankroll. You playing $20,000 a night out of Men Joe's Selling ten dollar stones, baby. A weekend at Minjo's easily cleared you sixty thousand dollars, if not more. Remember, Minjo's. I do. Subscribe, share, and like right there on Six Mile in uh, Hamilton. Minjo's Palmer Park. Make a right, you're going right into Palmer Park. Minjo's had a hell of a location. And they spent a whole lot of money with me. So I'll never forget Men Joe's and the crowd that used to go to it because they was nothing but cash. Understand Men Joe's. They wasn't asking or begging or short. They came correct. Subscribe, share, and like. This is real true street crime. I ain't prejudiced. I ain't a racist. And I don't discriminate, pick, and choose who money I'm going to take. As long as you ain't the police, bring it on, baby. And you got my total respect. You'll never hear me call you some fag or sissy. I used to have one that come to French Road that used to cross-dress all the time. He didn't come out to 11, 12, 1 o'clock at night. First time I ever met him, Dennis Richardson brought him to me. And Dennis knocked on the door out and the dentist, Dennis that served him. And when he walked up to the door, whoo, the lights hit him and everything hit him and he was cross-dressed. And man, I looked, whoo, it scared the shit out of me. Not in that sense, but in the movie, the way Dennis was sitting there out the door and the lights hit him, I got a steel cage up there. He can't get to me. I got my pistol sitting right here. But anyway, when he opened it, I looked at him. He looked like the guy in the movie that always get killed to start off the movie that be running, 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 running. That's exactly how he looked. But out the door and the light hit him and he walked up there and boom, he cross-dressed a man looking like a woman. And let me tell y'all one other thing about that. He used to make more money than all the prostitutes I served on Mac. Gwen, Fats, Angie, all of them. This motherfucking sissy used to come out Angie, Gwen, Fats, all them was coming with five, tens, and twenties. Every motherfucker he pulled up with was spinning a C note. Everybody he pulled up with was spinning a hundred dollars. I used to watch to see who he was getting out the car with and hanging with. So if they come back and want to spend some money, they home. I used to do that all the time. I'm trying to snatch the customers. Fuck their gay. They spend a hundred dollars every time. I want that money. So I'm trying to people we with 
Let them see me, so if they come back see me, they got want some of that shit we got for him. And it worked. Understand, my clientele grew just from letting the people he would come with see me, who he was buying from. It enlarged my business. And as I told y'all, I don't pick and choose or discriminate on money, baby. That money was awful green, real green. Understand how they cashed me out. So I used to always have a special place in my heart for transvestites. I didn't tease them, make fun of them, because they always cashed me out. And I made sure if they came to my joint, you wasn't going to be teasing them and fucking with them either. Well, you had to deal with me. Understand that. When they came to 3875 French Road, I guarantee you a motherfucker wasn't going to fuck with them. That's why they came there. Because they could walk up there, cop freely. It wasn't going to be no motherfucker standing around. You sissy, do you this? Nah, nigga, you ain't finna stand there and fuck my business up with that bullshit. Understand that. That's how it really was at 3875 French Road. Over there at 277 Geneva, the Carter, Minjo's used to make your night, baby. Night might be slow till you go to Minjo's. You ain't got to worry about nobody else at the building because Minjo's going to take care of that. Subscribe, share, and like. And I got sweet memories of Minjo's. I still can count all them thousands in my dream. Understand that. Subscribe, share, and like, and be kind to a transvestite. Subscribe, share, and like. Be kind to a transvestite. This is real true street crime. You only going to get this here on YouTube. Real true street crime. Simmons Law. Check them out. Brittany Simmons. Corporate deeds, wills, divorces, anything corporate. Simmons Law. Brittany Simmons, Google her. Check her out, and she will definitely help you out. Jelani's Taste and Table, 420 style or regular style. Have it your way, baby. Try some of them 420 style chicken wings, or perhaps one of them 420 style tacos. Check it out for yourself. Regular or 420 style. Jelani's Taste and Table, world class chef. Straight out of Baker's College. Top tier cuts, 313, Super King for the weekend. Top tier cuts, 313, Super King for the weekend. Coney Island Chronicles is Coney Island Tony. Check him out for yourself. Facebook, Instagram, all over the place. Coney Island Chronicles is Coney Island Tony. Check him out today. Big Boss Fam, Courtney Brown Jr., just for you. Check him out. Motown Mafia Podcast on Spotify is Courtney Brown Jr. too. Subscribe, share, and like. And as I say, I'm bringing it to you right here from YouTube. Red Dot, Red Shoes, baby. Right here on YouTube. Red Dot. Red shoes just for you. Eddie Jackson Jr. Go on over there and check us out on Crime Town, Spotify, Kingpin's Kids, and get a dose of your special agent, FBI officer, Ryan Giovanni, just for you on Crime Town, Kingpin's Kids on Spotify. And as I say, before I go, why lie when the real true street crime will do? Why lie when the real true street crime will do? Subscribe, share, and like, and be kind to a transvestite. They ain't like that. I believe truly in my heart I've met a lot of them, and most of them say they was born that way. So be kind because they can't help it. And they regular people just like anybody else. I've never seen them in any light other than the light they presented. And I used to always ask them a question. Do you go to church dressed as a van, van trust type? Do your preacher receive you when you go dressed like that? 
Let me ask all of y'all a question before I go and I'm gone. Do transvestites go to church like Flav, the comedian? And if he go, Flav, answer the question for us, brothers, if somehow you ever get it. Do you go to, to church dressed in your Flav outfit, or do you go dressed as a man? Do you think they would accept you dressed in your Flav outfit? Because here's what I want to say to you, Brother Flav, and I'm through with it. The money comes from the act that you do on stage dressed as a transvestite. So the money, the 10% or whatever you may give them, if you go, comes from the act that you do as a transvestite. So if you walked in church dressed like that, would they receive you or would they cast aside you? This is Real True Street Crown. Subscribe, share, and like. And that's just a question for all of you transvestites. Do you go to church dressed like that or do you go looking like a man? Which one do you do? Do they receive you looking like where you make your money or what you do to make your living? Do they receive you like that? They sure they take your 10%. They don't care if you put on a transvestite act. They sure they take your 10%. They don't care if you put on a transvestite act. Subscribe, share, and like. This is Eddie Jackson Jr. Just answer some questions that I've always wondered. Because I give every man respect that they deserve, especially spending money with me. You're going to get all the respect that you deserve and more. Miss Roby was one of the most funnest people I have ever met. And disrespect him, I can already tell you, you finna get your ass whooped. I done seen Miss Roby put more niggas in the garbage can and put more niggas up on the wall with one hand and hit your motherfucking ass with his hand. Look like your face exploded. When Miss Roby used to hit a motherfucker, he hit a nigga. It looked like every time he hit him, his face was going loop, 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 loop. And by the time he finished whooping that nigga's ass, his head looked like loop. That's how Miss Roby used to whoop a motherfucker's ass that disrespected him. Subscribe, share, and like. And this is this one for all of you. Thank you for anybody who takes time to view me over here on YouTube. Red Dot Red Shoes. Eddie Jackson Jr. Subscribe, share, like, and thanks to all of you. And in the end mother words of the fat man, Eddie Jackson, Big Bear Cola, Mr. President, I'm going to be seeing a lot of you all. Ha! <laughs>